every guy I know is obsessed with one thing. No, actually not that for once. This, sports betting. I can't watch the game in peace because Jerry has gone catatonic since his 12 game parlay went 1 and 11. Mm -hmm. DraftKings made $600 million in 2020 when the world was ending through three revenue streams, gambling, fantasy, and NFTs. Let's start with the biggie, sports betting. 20% of men participate in frequent sports gambling, with the highest percentage of offenders coming from the 35 to 44 year old age group, the true pillars of society. But unfortunately, 84% of the total sports betting revenue is taken by the operators, not by the ingenious gamblers. How? The odds are set to provide built-in margin that favors the house. The goal is to set a line that draws an equal amount of bettors to either side of a bet. Then the sportsbook earns the VIC, or the difference between what the losing side puts down and how much the winning side is paid out. Technically, sports betting platforms have no interest then in the outcome of the bet. I tried to model which pair of odds generate the highest VIG, but the math became too hard for my squirrel brain. But if action is not split evenly on the lines, and more people bet correctly than incorrectly, the platform will lose money. No! God, please, no! That's why lines update in real time. So essentially, it's an extremely sophisticated machine learning program versus Jerry. No, 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 no. <laughs> Do you know what the best sports bet ever made was? Me neither, but this one was funny. Yuri Andrade bet someone would streak at the Super Bowl, and he won because he streaked at the Super Bowl, and he would have gotten away with it too if it weren't for his incessant blabbing about it on the internet. If you respect the play, then like this video. Sports betting platforms like DraftKings often offer free money to users to get them to make an account. But when they offer that free money, an additional deposit is required to unlock it. When this deposit is required, you say, okay, I'll put in this 50 bucks, but I'll only bet until it's gone. When you say you'll only bet until it's gone, you lie to yourself. When you lie to yourself, you take a loan from Romanian mobsters to keep sports betting. When you take a loan from Romanian mobsters, you sell your kidney to pay them back. Don't sell your kidney, get rid of DraftKings. DraftKings' next revenue stream is Daily Fantasy Sports, the business I most wish I came up with. For those who have never interacted with a male in the fall before, fantasy football lets users draft players to create their own fantasy sports teams. And it's an absolutely ingenious business. Here's why. 100 million people in the US have played or are currently playing fantasy sports. The margins are insane because it's an infinitely downloadable software product. But here's the kicker. The main place you want to advertise your new fantasy service, the sports networks themselves, absolutely love you. Because now, instead of Jerry just watching his hometown team, he has to watch the game for every single one of his fantasy league players. Most likely shouting things like, you betrayed me, or I knew you were a bad athlete. While his bag of Doritos got lost between Fat Roll 3 and Fat Roll 4. Players buy in to compete in a league with their friends or with strangers. Whoever wins takes Yay! the pot money. Well, 90% of the pot money because DraftKings just takes 10%. Finally, DraftKings has an NFT marketplace with some of the content belonging to Tom Brady's autograph collection, in which fans can buy limited edition season tickets or autographed player cards. I think autograph is a great idea, but the website sucks. All of DraftKings' business lines are designed to do one thing, keep you chained to your couch all day long every weekend. I was looking for stats on how much time is spent on sports, and Statista tried to tell me that men only spend 2.8 hours a week watching sports. Stop the cap. Let's say you watch just two college and two pro games every weekend. We'll call it 12 hours worth. If you make $25 an hour, that's a post-tax opportunity cost of $210. Now add in the beer, wings, and fries, and you're in the whole 300 bucks. Add in the loss of quality life years because you're a fat amoeba, we'll up it to 400. Now multiply that by 15 weekends, and this football season costs you six grand without buying a single ticket. And that's only if you break even sports betting. But screaming at your wife because your team isn't playing well? Priceless. I'm gonna go out on a limb here and say watching grown men play games through a magic screen for 12 hours straight is not the peak of human existence. One game at the bar with friends? Sure. An entire weekend spent on the couch? It's definitely a no for me, dog.